A typical rejection of the idea of free will is based on the determinism of the universe. The problem with that is that it has a definition of free will that is rather restrictive. It appears that a person rejecting free will on that basis would see an organism, human being specifically, as a automaton that behaves according to externally set rules. So to speak, a program that is imposed on that organism directing it how to run, more or less. However, what people like that often don't realize is that a lack of determinism would not rescue that free will. It would not give you a free will where first where originally there wasn't. No, randomness doesn't rescue it. For a very simple reason. Once you have adopted the point of view that the organism is running as an automaton directed by external rules, a program so to speak, even if that program incorporated randomness, if the rules of that program were random, what that would mean is that the puppet, the organism, would rather than be being pulled by deterministic strings, would be pulled by random strings, but it would make the organism no less of a puppet. But, in any case, I believe that the definition of free will is wrong. See, the problem we have with uh, determinism is that we look at uh, the universe as a whole, but picture ourselves from the outside looking down on the universe and seeing it run according to the deterministic rules. And of course then, you would be in the position where you would say, well, everything that happens inside that universe is completely predictable, it can be calculated, and therefore uh, you can't say that something inside that universe is uh, autonomous in any way, shape or form. Um, in a way, it is running according to an external rule. But of course, in reality, that line of reasoning cannot apply. Because, for the very simple reason, that there is no external view to be had from the universe. The universe is quite literally all that there is. And therefore, no matter how deterministic it is, nothing can describe what's going on inside that universe. I just want to leave you for a second with that thought that you are, in principle, not calculable. Nobody can work out what you're going to do next. That removes a very important block to accepting that we do actually have free will. But we also need to actually look at what free will really is and how we should define the term. Now I've already done a 10 part series on the topic of free will, so I have to refer you to that, but I'm just going to sort of summarize my position on this. What I consider free will to be is twofold. First of all, the organism's ability to uh, establish for itself, to, be, to make itself aware of all the choices that are available to it, and then, secondly, based on its innate wants and needs, to be able to exercise the options, to make a choice based on its internal processes. That is what I think free will is, the ability to make a choice based on the knowledge that you have and your wants and needs. But now it gets interesting. Are there levels of free will? Yes, I would say there are. Just think about it for a moment. And this might be a little bit surprising to some. Think for a moment about a person who just does whatever the hell they please. They never consider anything. They just are driven directly by their basic wants and needs and do the first thing that comes into their heads. You might say that person just does what they want, 
they are exercising their free will to the max. Are they really? I wouldn't say so. And this is why. Because such a person is just following their basic instincts and responding immediately to every want and need that it perceives, it is in fact behaving completely like an automaton. It may, it would probably feel quite well or happy about itself because a person doing that would constantly achieve instant gratification if it's physical, physically possible. But their free will is severely impeded because they never consider any options, they never consider any choices, they never make any choices. They just follow their gut instincts. In order to exercise your free will, you have to do a bit more than that. Now consider the following person. Somebody who constantly questions the world around them, who constantly seeks understanding of what happens around them, who will always try and look at things from many different perspectives, who will as well as possible concern themselves with what other people feel, how they think, what their emotional states are. Somebody who seeks to enhance their education. Somebody who wants to look at things from many different perspectives. What do you think happens to that person's options? In my opinion, their options are greatly increased. The more you learn, the more alternatives that you are aware of. The more alternatives you are aware of, the more choices you have. The harder you occupy yourself, you think about moral, moral issues, morality, and how your actions impact on others, the more options you see available to you to do the right thing, so to speak, or at least to behave in certain ways. And the more, then, you can actually exercise your free will. So to summarize, free will is the ability to look at the different options that are available, to think about those options, and to make a choice. That is what free will is in a nutshell. And to improve your ability to exercise free will, you need to educate yourself, and you need to think and behave like a moral human being. The more you concern yourself with questions of ethics and of morals, the more true free will you will have. And that is my opinion.